<laughs> That's Katie. She that, and she's waving. I'm doing. I'm doing the uh, the Julie the, Andrews the... Queen wave from from Princess. Isn't that Paris. like that? No, no, no. It's it's you have to kind of waft. It's a waft. It's not okay, this. That's this. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Thank I you won't for be, being I won't... here today. <laughs> Yeah. I won't be a princess, so you know, it's fine. Uh, also, with this hat on and how my hair is, it looks like I have a mullet. <laughs> so, hey, like, mullets are in at the moment. I know. I don't think it would sue me, but you know. No, no, it's it's not bad. I think if you if you had it, if it was more styled as a mullet, I think it would go pretty well. Maybe. I think it's I'll, just I'll, too. At the moment, it's too. You've got too much on the sides. It needs to be a little bit yeah. like less. Kind of. Ah, uh, uh, never mind. I have to mind. It's bad hair day, so that's why I have a hat. And also, today's topic is going to be the MCU. So I'm like, other than my T-shirt, because that's like, you How's know. How's Gary? <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. She, she <laughs> came on, and it just, all I could see was House Gary. And now that's, um, I've decided that's a thing. Oh, God. Uh, do you want to introduce our lovely podcast? Hmm, maybe I will. After this one. Oh, look, at, look at her. She has wine. I have coffee. It is uh, five o'clock on a bank holiday Monday, and I have. <laughs> she's yeah. she's going to be drunk throughout the whole episode. <laughs> One glass of wine? <laughs> what do you think my constitution is? It's more than enough for me. I would be like dead drunk. Oh, uh, no, I'm that. my. I have a. I'm, I'm kind of the opposite of a lightweight. Okay, good for you. You would lose me if I would have to drink that. I would be like, done. You have to spin anything to me. <laughs> okay. I'm Irish, remember? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I do. I do. Anyway. Yes. Hello, everyone. Welcome to all the films we judged before. Very apt title for today's topic. I'm Katie. That's Lily Kay. These things don't really change all that much. No. Well, I mean, we could change Sometimes. Names. Well, no, I don't. I, I'm, I'm all right with my name. Thank you. <laughs> well, you could be like the uh, Captain Irish. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the Irish wouldn't be particularly pleased with that because, as much as I am mostly Irish, I'm also, you know, I'm also English. Still works. Still works. A mm. little bit. Mm. Tiny bit. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. But anyway, um, I, 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 I have decided. <laughs> she did. She decided. <laughs> no, was that? okay. It's it was me that uh, today we're going to talk MCU because uh, I realized that we already uh, top five our favorite movies, our favorite TV shows. But uh, you know, MCU is a biggie here on our podcast, and we never really ranked MCU. Uh, but we put a twist on it. I put a twist on it. And we're going to uh, rank the best castings in the MCU and the best moments in the MCU. So, but what she know. means by that is that I have written down 10 names of people who I really like in the MCU. And uh, to be fair, I was going as off of like, I was going off of like, I was thinking of, of characters I really liked first. And then I was like, well, you should do five men and five women. And then I ended up doing four women because I had an extra man in there. Uh, so they're grouped in men and women at the moment. But. Considering I kind of did it in sense of like these were the first ones that came to mind and I started googling some people because I, I was trying to considering I couldn't just go ah oh, women in my head I feel like maybe the MCU has still some more work to do in that department <laughs> um, but yeah I, that's that we can we can just go, I'm just gonna go I'm gonna I'm gonna just go like between man woman man woman I think that's probably the best way to do it for me. That ain't ranking, though. I rank them. But like, like... They, they, you have to think about it this way. I've kind of internally ranked them by putting them in order like of the way that they came to me. If you know uh -huh. what I mean? No. <laughs> so the person that I think of as the best casting was the first name that came to mind. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. That being okay. said, I'm actually going gonna, gonna, I'm gonna to do a bit of shuffling. <laughs> So, so should I start then? You should start. Yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, uh, are we are we skipping our uh, what did we watch this week or? But did you watch anything? I I didn't. I <laughs> I finished catching up with Chris Roll. Okay. Was the big thing. I watched all of Calamity and I cried my fucking eyes out. Fair. Brennan. Fair. 
<laughs> You're really good at this, but Christ. <laughs> I I wasn't stingy on spoilers for that either. I read all the spoilers. I still wept <laughs> multiple times. Fair, fair. Storytelling. And it's good, it's good. It is, it's good. and it's it was so good. It was so That's all that matters. Good. And I think it's one of those ones that I could just give, be like, hey, you should watch this four part and you don't really need to know a whole lot else about oh, okay. the, uh, about uh, Critical Role and I think you'd get enough out of it. Oh. Because it's fun. kind of, a, it's very self-contained. And then um, it, because I was watching Mike's Mike recap Pretty Little Liars again, I, I watched the first two episodes of Pretty Little Liars <laughs> and they're so bad. Oh. <laughs> uh. Yeah, it's really, it's fully trash TV. Oh, good. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes sometimes you just want to watch a bit of trash. You know, that's, you know, that's true. It's fair. Uh, oh, wait. I, I, don't, did, I, I don't know yes. if I'm going to keep going with it, but I, I'm, I, I wanted to get a flavor of the thing that I had been watching multiple videos about. Um, it's just it's just edited very poorly. And it's, you know, old, uh, early, to, like late 2000s, teen drama TV, you know, that kind of vibe. Yeah, no, I'm not into that anymore. No, I think that's fair too. I just, it, I, because it was, it, that's the kind of TV that I kind of, on one hand, grew up with. So it is kind of, because I was a big fan of One Tree Hill as a kid. And, fair. and, uh, well, I say Gilmore Girls, but Gilmore Girls was actually good. Gilmore Girls is good. Um, but like, One Tree Hill being the kind of main, one mm. that was kind of trashy but like i re i still would watch if it, it was, was on. Right. I was like yeah yeah <laughs> i very much enjoyed it i like the characters and stuff but yeah this is just it's, it's badly edited i can't <laughs> there's the crane shot in the pilot that like goes from the characters or and it kind of goes up into the sky yeah it's fucking wobbly like you can see the camera moving <laughs> and... i feel like that should tell you everything about what you need to know yeah yeah <laughs> They they can't all be winners, unfortunately. <laughs> and there's, I'm I'm perfectly fine with that kind of television existing. You know, it, it's 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 popcorn TV. It's yeah, you know, silly and yeah. over dramatic and all those sorts of things. Um, okay. What were you watching? You said you had you had a th you had a thought. Yes, yes, yes. I do. I do. Uh, um, I I watched. Uh, I finished Our Blues, which is the Korean TV show that I talked about previously. Oh yeah. I fucking cried my eyes out. <laughs> like. I was loudly weeping uh, at the end, and once again, I would I would like to say that please just watch it. Like everyone who's listening, it's such a freaking gem, and uh, thankfully it has a closing that is like you know it's not a cliffhanger or anything, and it's just a beautiful story all around. Like every episode, all of them are just so freaking well done, and uh, you know I can can recommend it enough. Like. Beautiful, beautiful TV. Um, loved every single minute. So yeah, it's it's it was beautiful. I really enjoyed it, and I obviously uh, since it's Monday now, uh, as we are recording, I also watched uh, the second episode of House of the Dragon, and it's still brilliant. So I'm I'm very pleased with it so far. <laughs> I'm very glad. Yeah, I'm very pleased. I'm like you know I'm a big Game of Thrones fan, so happy. I had I did actually watch something else, but it kind of ties into one of my choices, so I'm gonna wait okay. and mention it then because it kind of it, it it ties in. It okay, ties in. So, oh, but yeah, there is a, a. I watched this little thing last night. Um, that, yeah. All right. Do you want to sure. start them? Yeah. Sure. Let's let's roll. So for, uh, the first list is the top ten castings in the MCU, and. I'm starting backwards, so... Uh, yeah, we're going to number, start with 10. Yes, number 10 is Elizabeth Olsen as Wanda Maxi-Wolf. You know funny? She's AKA also the Scarlet on my Witch. List. Nah, I'm not surprised. <laughs> she's, she's, on my, she's, she's number 8 on my list, I'll tell you that now, because uh, I figure we, we get, if we, she's there, we might as well talk about her in one go. Yes, uh, she's brilliant. I think she was the perfect choice for, for this role from the beginning. I actually re really liked her in Age of Ultron as well, where we got the real introduction to the twins. And, uh, you know, I, I like how they were able to change her character from the, you know, lab experiment to uh, this badass, uh, a bit chaotic as, you know, she's the... Scarlet bit, so 
the chaos magic and everything. You it can just, just fits. She's a bad guy now. <laughs> she's a bad guy now. Yes, but I still love her. She's fucking great. And I don't think anyone else could bring uh, this much uh, to this character. So I'm very, very pleased with Alice Petal. A level of unhinged. Um, mm-hmm. This is not a word, but we're going with it. That Maybe I we'll... very much appreciate about the, what she has brought to this character. Um, oh, it, yes. it's, it's a, it's a character trope I do like. I like, I like a crazy lady. Mm-hmm. And she's a crazy lady. Yes, she's beautiful and dumb. Lady. Yeah, so I pop this number eight for you. Yeah, I put her on number eight. I, I kind of ordered them. It's still, it's, it's just the way it's gone. It has gone women and then men. Which feels sexist, and I apologize for it, but that's just the way it's happened. I think you're all good. What's your number ten then? Um, Angela Bassett, as um, oh. from uh, just because I think Angela Bassett in any um, capacity is always a win, you know. Okay, um, I like that because I, I was going through and I was like, I need to think of more women for this list. I can't make it all men. But mm. I was looking at some of the women that were popping up and I was like, I don't really, I wasn't getting anything off of, like, you know, it's like, yeah, obviously, um, and I'll say this because she's not on my list, obviously Scarlett Johansson did a lot for, you know, the women. In yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but it doesn't, and this is why I was kind of a bit uh, apprehensive when you brought this to me, because I don't have a basis on how good the casting is based off of, like, the comics. I'm mm-hmm. going more of like the impression that was given to me from the movie. Yeah. So and yeah. and as much as the, it's kind of it doesn't it, it doesn't do a whole lot for me beyond like oh yeah she's black widow you know that kind yeah. of thing yeah um yeah. but Angela Bassett and I I didn't realize that this was her name but um uh, <laughs> Ramonda Ramonda there you go mm-hmm, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. I mean she's just she is one of those people who inherently has that sense of regality. Of what, oh yeah, like, you know, and um, and I I'm very much looking forward to being able to see her again in in um, in Wakanda uh, forever. In Wakanda forever. Um, yeah, and I just think she's wonderful. So <laughs> kind of oh, I love the that. I love that. That's such a good choice. Mm. All right, uh, number nine for me is Iman Welani as Kamala Khan, uh, aka Miss Marvel. She's just the perfect choice again. I like. All of these, I put this on the list because I think they are the perfect choice for yeah. the characters. Uh, and, uh, you know, she she completely has the attitude. She was a Marvel fan before she got cast as, as Kamala. Uh, she, she, she loves what she's doing. You can just, I think you can just tell, tell it from the performance and, you know, how invested she is in uh in in her character uh and it just comes through i think it's it's very good when you can tell that an actor actually enjoys doing what they are doing and it's just you know she's doing it so beautifully and i loved every second of miss marvel and i honestly just can't wait to get her back in the marvels uh, because i i want her i want her to have conversations with captain marvel because it's gonna be just glorious i can already tell (laughs) i only didn't put that on because i haven't watched miss marvel yet um so uh, i thought i didn't think it'd be fair um because so, I have no uh, concept yeah. of the whole thing, and I, I do need to watch it. I know it's on my list, along with watching She Hulk, which means that Tatiana Manzani is not on here either. Um, okay, fine. Um, so I put Tessa Thompson's Valkyrie in at number eight. In mm. nine. Um, yes. Again, this is just because I love Tessa Thompson more than anything else. I just think she's cool. She's hot. <laughs> you know? Just yeah. like embodies that sense of like. I, it's just one of the best things that Taika managed to give us. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Along with the many, like the Ragnarok, which you know exists and is great. Um, she's great in it. Uh, again, I like women that are a bit insane and a bit of a mess, and she's, she's a cool. bit of a mess. <laughs> yes. <laughs> when she's, you know, she's big swords, amazing hair. I just love her. <laughs> oh great. yeah. I I think that's you know you explained it perfectly. Yeah, you know she's just great. There's <laughs> not much beyond that. Just being like, I just really like you. <laughs> <laughs> that's a completely fair point. Uh, oh, sorry. So I'm number windy. eight, we... uh, my thing is uh, my my blind is going crazy because I had to close the window. <laughs> okay, I can hear it. I uh, have it my air, air me. on. <laughs> oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. 
it's it's not aliens, so that's because... not aliens. It's just it's it's just my blind strange. trying to escape from my window. That's fine. Um, so my number eight, we know that your number eight is I Elizabeth mean, Olsen as the Scarlet Witch. Mm -hmm. uh, mine is Paul Rudd as Ant Man. I considered doing this, but I found some other ones that I liked better. Um, oh. But I did think I, it crossed my mind, and I was like, you know, yeah, that was that was a good choice. Yeah, I just genuinely every time I I rewatch uh, Ant Man, uh, any of the two, or just his appearance in Civil War or whatever, really. He's just great. I think it's you his know? appearance in Civil War that I think of most when I think of Ant Man, honestly. Oh my God. Because I think and he's he sees Captain a... America. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just think it's that's that's the thing that I think of. Uh, I, I mean, I still have um, I still have deep feelings about the Ant Man movie. <laughs> it's not fine. a bad film. It just could have been so much better. <laughs> I just love you know. I just love the Ant Man movies because they are just fun and just silly and. Paul Rudd is excellent and that's all I need in life sometimes just seeing Paul Rudd is a silly superhero that's it and I'm happy it's <laughs> always a win yeah it's always a win uh, so yeah Paul Rudd to, to, to steal something from uh, uh, <laughs> Cinema Wins who yes. I very much appreciate yes shout out Cinema Wins much better than Cinema Sins yes that's, that's, that's a fact <laughs> that's a fact um, do you want to go? Because otherwise, we're just going to switch again. Because obviously, we already know that I, I picked Wanda for, for number eight, and I feel, yes. I feel pretty good about that. Uh, yeah. Do you want to go in for your number seven? Yes, sure. That's uh, Chadwick Boltman as Black Panther. <laughs> Chadwick it... is number three on my list. Oh, I put him okay. very high. Cause... You, you put him very high. So, I want to hear I... your th thoughts, and then I will. Um... Well, he really is just. You know, he is Black Panther. Like, end of story. Just bosh, done. Just done. Done. He's he's just, you know, he was the perfect choice. And I hate that it's a past tense. Like, I know. Still. <laughs> it's, um, I think it came up on my time hop the other day. It's been about two years, like, to two the day, years now. pretty much. Yeah. Um. And I know this because it happened the same month my grandma passed away, so I had a yeah. bit of a reaction to it. Um, also, she it was, she also had cancer, so it's like you know, yeah, sucks. fucking sucks. August sucked a couple of years ago. Well, I <laughs> it was a bad month. <laughs> I know. No, we, we I wish we wouldn't remember it, but here we are. <laughs> like. Uh, sometimes there are sucky months. That's, That's just how life sucky. works, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. I mean, for me, this August is just sucky all around. So I'm like, <laughs> well, we're nearly yay. at the end, so you're fine. I know, I know, I know. But uh, yeah, Chad Bick is just the perfect choice. I'm gonna talk. About I don't know my if just sorry to put Chad Bick at number three uh, when we get to number three. I think. Okay, fine, fine. Uh, but uh, yeah, I I I don't know how they're gonna top him as Black Panther. We'll see. We'll see. Um, yeah. My number seven, and yes. I hope you'll allow me to do this because I, I, I wasn't sure, but um, I think it counts. It is still MCU stuff, even if it's not, it's kind of adjacent. But I picked Kristen Ritter as Jessica Jones. And a big part of this is that I have been watching, and part of what I was doing last night is Louis and I, Louis's been watching Jessica Jones. He read all yes. the alias comics, so he's been making his way through, and he's was. Uh, he started on season three very recently. Okay. Um, and I watched episodes four through six of Jessica Jones last night. Okay. And I just think she's, again, another another woman who's kind of a mess, <laughs> a bit angry. And um, uh, she, I don't think there's anybody else who could have done that for Jessica Jones. Uh, she kind of was that. She was the perfect choice for that series. Mm. Um. Uh, and I, I think, it, and I, the way that they managed to craft her story, especially in that season three, is, is really, I, I, I love it a lot, and I have a lot of love for that character. Um, and and um, I forgot it's tangential, but as I said, I was, I was watching it last night. Uh, there's a character called Eric in uh, series three, and it really was a character that was built specifically for me. <laughs> I saw your tweet. Uh, uh, very much built for me. <laughs> <laughs> there was like no content after that season came out on Tumblr. Like there was just no gift sets and stuff. And I was like, I'm deprived. <laughs> I want to look at pretty gifts of Eric because he's wonderful and a mess. 
and deeply empathetic and my favorite kind of character in my character you know? I, I, I can't say anything because I still haven't watched Jessica Jones and I don't think I will to be honest <laughs> Uh, so I, I don't have an opinion on That's that. Fair. I just believe you. <laughs> Whatever you she say. The, 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 of those four Defenders yeah. shows, obviously, um, like, I think it's Coulter is his last name. The gentleman who played Luke Cage was amazing. Yes. Uh, and had a, an incredible presence um, uh, and is, is, is brilliant. I just didn't get very far in his show. I literally watched up until about halfway through the first season. And then they kind of got rid of... Luke Cage, yeah. They kind of got rid of the main antagonist in season one and kind of switched gears. So I ended up kind of watching until he got rid of that first antagonist and it didn't go any further. Iron Fist was just bad. Like, yeah. that's just facts. Um, I feel like people were kind of mean to the guy who played Danny, but mm -hmm. also the character was pretty annoying. So <laughs> there's, there is that whole thing. Um, but then I, Jessica Jones and Daredevil were both like pretty... They both had pretty not great season twos. I'll put that that way. I mean, there's like Daredevil season two was far better than what Jessica Jones did yeah. for season two. Yeah. But they both also did like really really good season threes. Um, let's put it that way. So, fair. yeah, I picked Kristen Ritter for Jessica Jones. Okay, fine, fair enough. Uh, number six, mm -hmm. Angelina Jolie as Tina. Mm. And it's. It's not just because I love Angelina Jolie. <laughs> I will, I will like to put that out there. I, it's, it's. Not I have just an objective because. opinion about this, even if I am very biased. <laughs> uh, it's not just because, just because of that. That's that's the end of the story. It's also because I think they now got uh, one of the greatest storylines in there. Like I love all of the Eternals. I think they are all great. And I love the casting for all of them. But if I would have to choose one just from their team, that's Angelina. Because I, I think uh, she portrayed uh, Tina's inner fight uh, just so beautifully. Uh, that scene alone uh, where they realize that she has this sickness, that you know she remembers the past lives and whatnot, that's... Still, it's just such a heartbreaking scene and, and she did it so perfectly. And especially, you know, it's 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 a beautiful scene, very heartbreaking also when she loses Gilgamesh and uh, my, my, my favorite person on earth, just so, so gracefully done. And, you know, obviously she's a fucking badass when it comes to the fighting stuff. And uh, I don't think uh, many, many can portray that, you know, Yeah. For the people listening who can't see us, she's gesturing just, sort of vaguely. I'm just. <laughs> she is Tina, and that's it. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll take that. Thank um, you. My number six is Clark Gregg as, as Agent Colton. Because <laughs> I just. My baby! Because <laughs> uh, I feel like. Coulson really w ended up being such a, like, a, a touchstone in the early MCU stuff to the point yes. where. Like, I don't. Agents of Shield wouldn't have been a thing if people weren't so upset about his death yes. in the original Avengers movie. And I feel like it, it. It really is down to the fact that he brought this sort of everyman, quiet charm to the the character. He's just a guy. He wanted to do his best, and he's just lovely. Um, and I still think those uh, those early MCU movies. I, I still think of Coulson more than I think of a lot of other things. If that makes sense. Um, so I think, yeah, again, like, in terms of casting, like, that wouldn't have happened if it wasn't him, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's right. Really. 100%, because he's my number five, so... Oh, you know. well, there you go! You said it all. I love Carl Greg so much. I was so disappointed that he didn't make it to the July comic gun because I just really wanted to give him a big hug. Just, you know, he's Agent Coulson. I love Agent Coulson, and he's great. Uh... So yeah, that's he's my number five. Well, that was, I'm actually going to do a last minute switcheroo. With oh, my number four and my number five. Okay. Um, just, just I'm going to switch one up and one down, um, yes. and go. I'm putting Oscar Isaac as Mark slash Stephen slash Jake at number five. Um, yes, because uh, that just series yes. is 
amazing. Um, even if I do have issues with the last episode, as I do with most uh, MCU TV series, um, that episode five was outstanding. Uh, mm. uh, and it, yeah, I mean, it's Oscar Isaac. <laughs> you, you just believe that he has three different personalities. He's so good. He's, he's Yeah, he plays three different people. And you're like, yeah. Yeah, it, I, I I get that a lot with um, it's it's that same feeling of like, oh shit, maybe I put no that that would no, <laughs> I just suddenly was like maybe I should have put Tom Hardy, <laughs> but I didn't I didn't um put that as an honorable mention that I very dearly love Tom Hardy as, 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 Eddie, as Eddie Brock, <laughs> but okay um just just put that out there um okay uh I, I say but I bring him up because. Uh, it, I get the same sort of feeling it, like in when I watched Legend for the first time mm. with Tom Hardy playing mm. those twins where you yes. just forget that he's both of them that yeah, he's yeah, just yeah. one person and there's two yeah. of them and you're just sort of like oh that's two different people and we're like no hang on a second <laughs> that's movie magic and it is. an incredible performance and I, this is the oh, same so where you can you there are moments where you just see him be a different person like in an instant and mm -hmm. anytime anybody can do that I'm like you're very talented. Um, Respect all around. Uh, and I just think he's, uh, I think he's lovely. And I really like what that series did. And it was just a good, good choice all around. Mm. Uh, Excellent. Yeah. yeah, good, good, yeah. good, 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 good. I like that choice a lot. Yeah. Um, I'm going to jump on number four. Yeah. And that is the one and only Anthony Mackie as the Falcon slash I was this Captain America. to putting him on. Uh, mm -hmm. But he kind of popped up around the time where I was like, I should put some women on this list. <laughs> um, but I had the I thought. Oh, Mackie is just great. Like, you know, from the very first second, he steps on screen on that magical scene in The Winter Soldier on your left. On no, your left. No, 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 don't say it again. <laughs> Stop it. No. <laughs> and just, it's just, he's there. He's already there. He's like, you know, you know Natural that you're going to fall charm. in love. Yeah, you're gonna fall in love with this guy, and you are like, it's great. If you don't like Anthony Mackie, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you it's doing? I, I, I love his interview moments, I, I love how much he loves Sebastian Stan. <laughs> it's just, you know, it's the bromance that we need, <laughs> it's great. Um, and he is the Falcon slash Captain America. I will never forget that speech at the end of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Beautifully done by Mackie, and uh, yeah, just and we get to see more of him. Yes, what a delight! Beautiful, just what I need, and I I know that Elliot agrees with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, the inside picture of Elliot here. <laughs> Elliot, our friend Elliot. Um, so yeah, that's Mackie number mm -hmm. four. All right, uh, and this is where we, we should see my my true. I put Charlie Cox's dad over at number four. I'm not even surprised. <laughs> I, because I saw him at number five, I'm like, nah, he goes up higher than that, though, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, Just a little bit. Because uh, obviously, yeah, driving off of what I was saying about Jessica Jones, Daredevil's fucking brilliant. Um, it is the best of the Marvel TV shows. Uh, none of the Marvel ones that they've done have beaten this for me. Even with that series, too, that um, has things in it that really, really annoy me. Yeah. <clears throat> Electra. Um... <laughs> Yep. Uh, but he, I mean, he's, I mean, there's a reason he's now in like three other series, including a new one of his own. Like, and people have been campaigning for years to get him back. To get him back. Yeah. He, there's nobody else. And kind of side tangentially, tangentially, I'm not taking any other foggies either, Marvel. <laughs> no. Or uh, any other with some fisks. So true. Yeah, that's a good point. So true. Just, um, you know, just putting it out there. Yeah. Um, I think he's just, uh, he has, uh, he he brings that sense of, he's damaged. <laughs> in the way that I, <laughs> yes. that I uh, very much enjoy in a, in, a, in a character. Um, uh, but also, it, it's just the depth of that rage that he has. Mm. Uh, and, and you believe in that thing of, of he lets the devil out when he really... When he, when he fights, you know. And he loves the character. You can tell whenever he talks about it. And the fact that he's so happy to be back and doing more. And, you know. 
It's Charlie Cox, man. Love it's him. It's Charlie Cox, man. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. All right, number three, we already know yours. Mm-hmm. Uh, mine is Zoe Saldana as Gamora. I had a feeling she'd be on your list somewhere. Of course. <laughs> Probably of quite course, high. Yes. I had I had the feeling. Yes, she's she's my beloved. I mean, uh, for me, if I'm looking at the women of the MCU, she's Gamora. She's you know she's a nerd. She's a geek like us. Uh, I mean, just look at his film, uh, her films like you know Avatar, Star Trek. <laughs> Oh, I thought you were talking about Gamora. I was like, Gamora's a nut. No, 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 no. So no, no. confused. So, I'm okay, I'm, 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 I'm with you now. I understand what you're going for. Okay, fun. Um, so yeah, you know, and uh, I, I remember when they announced that they're gonna make a Guardians of the Galaxy movie. Uh, I was like, okay, who's in it? And then you know, I looked at the casting, and it was like Zoe Saldana. Okay. <laughs> That's all I need to know. Done. I already love it. Done. And I'm not disappointed. Like, she's just so great. I am. I was so fucking disappointed when she died in Infinity War. I was like, yeah. that's that's where I really started to cry. I was like, I already cried a bunch of times there. But like, when we got to that part where Gamora dies, I was like, nope, mm-mm, mm-mm, no, I, I can't accept this. It's just not possible. It's the blinds, Katie. Yeah, it's not aliens. I don't know where it's not it's not aliens. So, like, excuse me. <laughs> right now? How dare you? How dare you? How blind? dare? <laughs> um, so yeah, but I'm I'm so happy she's back. I was hoping that they will. I mean, there was no way they were going to go away. Yeah, I was I was so hoping for it. So, and if you yeah. read James Gunn's Twitter, you can just tell that like, he wasn't going to keep. Like he loves it. I know. If he loves all of them too yes. much to to do that, you know. Fair, fair. So yeah, that's Zoe. So yeah. yes, I put Chadwick Boseman uh, number three, and I I did that because I think that the impact that he had in oh, that yeah. character is kind of more important than most things. Like the the impact that that Black Panther had. Period. Look, it's right over there. Um, uh, yeah. when it came out, is kind of unparalleled, um, and was so important. Like, regardless, mm. I, I have my own criticisms when it comes to the MCU. I've made them known, and I think a lot of people have made them known, and I think they're all very, very valid. But I also think that what Black Panther did was so important uh, mm. in the zeitgeist. Um, and then, like, if it, it, it was like it was, it was a necessary step, and one that obviously should happen so much fucking sooner. Um, but the fact that he, he, spearheaded and was the was the face of something that meant a lot to a lot of young kids mm. and um yeah I've, we've gone over the, the 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 sadness that comes with that but yeah you will never be forgotten <laughs> never it's great all right uh number two number two i feel like you could probably pick you could probably guess my first my top two i think you can guess mine as well but, I'm, but yeah, okay. I, I have a feeling. <laughs> uh, Although I think you will be surprised by my number two. I want to say I don't have anything in the Gamora was the big one I was thinking of for you. Um, so in terms of anybody else, I'm I'm oh well no no I have one I think I I know your number one. Let's put it that that's it. But I'm it, what's so, your number two? It's Chris Evans. <gasps> oh okay, I thought that Best was your Captain number America. one. America, <laughs> I know that's why I said it's going to be a surprise. Look. I love Chris so much. I said this so many times on this yeah. podcast and everywhere <laughs> you <know> I can. <laughs> you all know this. She's I love hat. Chris. Yeah. I have it tattooed on my pen. I, I love Captain America. That's your own, I darling. love... <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I just love him. I think he is Captain America, especially if we think about that uh, uh, prior to this casting, he was always the, you know, the kind of bad guy and and that kind of roles. And uh, he just transformed into Steve Rogers beautifully, perfectly. He's great. But I I will never get tired of the fact that John Krasinski also (laughs) auditioned for Captain America. And then he saw Chris Hemsworth and said that nope, it's not gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> He's never <laughs> gonna be that bottom one. And then, you know, I that thought is still lingering in my head. Like, what would have happened if 
John Krasinski would have played Captain America. I could kind of see him play Captain America. I'm not going to lie. Although it's always going to be Chris for me. Like, he is our oh, yeah. captain. And he has America's ass. <laughs> Congrats, Chris. Great. Congrats, Chris. Yes, great. I love that there's a video when they were shooting. I think they were shooting Grey Man. <laughs> Someone, you know, spotted the whole shooting and everything. And they spotted Chris. And they recorded, like, them just screaming at him like that's america's ass and then you can just see his just just usual laugh, just touching the chest and just laughing <laughs> like perfect perfect we love chris mm. what's your number two darling tommy Wilson is loki uh... i mean because i mean that was that was he was he was the in for me, really, like mm. really, when it came, uh, yeah, no, he really was. He was kind. He really was the in for me more than anything else. Um, okay. uh, is that the right term? It's like okay, I'll put it this way: he is the David Tennant as Doctor Who for me. Oh, okay. In and I'll explain my analogy once I do my number one. Okay. Um. Because I mean, he, like, he was the he was the thing he was the he was the character I was obsessed with when I was you know sixteen and mm. he came out and yeah fifteen I was fifteen um so young fuck I don't Baby. know no I was fourteen because it came out in May I was fourteen oh my God. you know um so and that that and I um no matter what my feelings are on Joss Whedon anymore but, uh that I really 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 adored that movie um yeah. and he was a really really big part of that and mm. the, again it's another one of those things of like there's a reason <laughs> they just can't let him go <laughs> like well, every time somebody comes along and goes and he's dead now and then somebody else comes along and goes but what if he wasn't <laughs> yeah which is you know and I'm, it's just I'm perfect. okay with that <laughs> it's just I'll, perfect and Loki was so great and will continue to be great when we get more uh, mm -hmm. Which they're, f I think they're filming at the moment. They were filming. They are filming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they're they're filming at the moment, and I'm very very excited about that. Um, yeah, I'm just like you know, he's very, very important, and was very important. Like he, he, he a cultural phenomenon kind of levels of, of mm -hmm. like importance. Um, I think it is summed up in the fact that the, so many different people were like, and he's dead now, and then they went, but but he's not. Also, I mean, the, the big one was when they killed him off in in the Dark World. They yeah. intended to kill him off, and then they showed it to test audiences, and they were like, "Well, he's not dead, though, right?" Yeah. <laughs> like, that's the that that I think sums the whole thing up, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fair. That's a fair point. All right, we arrive to number one. Drum rolls and whatnot, and I'm almost. I feel like our oh, number ones might be the same, but I'm curious. But um, at this point, maybe, maybe, maybe. My number one is the one and only Robert Downey Jr. as Tony Stark. I wonder if I can actually show it off in the screen, or if it's going to be backwards. Uh, I shouldn't have made it brighter. That was the mistake I made. Oh, it's backwards. <laughs> there you go. Our DJ is as Tony Stark. As, as Tony Stark. I mean, there was nobody else, though, right? No, there really wasn't. So, to continue my analogy, real quick, if Tom Hiddleston is David Tennant being cast as the Doctor, mm. Robert Downey Jr. is Christopher Eccleston. Oh, in that he was the first, and like what he genuinely he was the in into the MCU, mm -hmm. right? And yeah, and we, we we know this, but you have a lot of love for Chris Evans as, as Captain America. He's your favorite, but for me, in that original kind of core, I love Tony Stark. Um, mm. Way more, more more than Chris Evans. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, and, and it's okay. Just, um, it's like it, so it, it has that level of importance for me. Mm -hmm. On that level, and then on a bigger level, and I think you'll agree with me here. The man is Tony Stark. Yeah, <laughs> like he is Tony Stark. That's like <laughs> end of story. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> like I don't know. Like we we wouldn't have the MCU without him. Yeah. Let's be honest. Off of his back, yeah. and 
the fact that his casting at the time was super controversial. Oh, yeah. Because he was still in the ship from, you know, his previous years and yeah. understandably in the ship for, for yeah. his previous years. They took a chance on him and he delivered. He did. It paid off so well. Uh, I just can't imagine anyone else. Just, uh, no. Yeah, <laughs> no. Uh, and put it this way, the two times I saw Infinity, not Infinity War, Endgame in the cinema. Endgame, yeah. Uh, sobbing. Sobbing, yeah. Sobbing at his death. And that was the big yeah. thing for me. Because I, we, we all knew it was like it, he's we we knew, like even if you weren't like you were kind of like airy, you, we knew, um that was because we all knew it was going to be his last one and it was like well there's no, and I I get a bit pissy about the idea of like oh the only way for this character to go out is dying because I don't believe in that ninety percent of the time. With this yeah. one, it was. <laughs> it was <laughs> you know? yeah. Wow, well, still makes me so sad. It really makes time me I... so sad. <laughs> I know. Every time I watch Endgame, it's like tears. Just instantly, like mm-hmm. no, I I still can't deal with it. <laughs> it's not it's not gonna happen anytime soon. It's like <laughs> please don't. Yeah, I miss Tony. Don't we all? And I but I kind of sorry you know I sorry uh, I I kind of I really wanted him to meet Riri uh, as Ironheart because you know. She's a great character, and I I feel like it would have been so nice to have them both in the same room. She's getting introduced in the new Black in, Panther movie, right? Yeah, yes. that's what I thought. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, that that would have been fun, but it's um, I I also very much respect the decision to be like, hey, I've been doing this for ten odd years at this ten. point. Yeah, um, yeah. kill me off, and I'm not coming back. Yeah, like that's yeah. Stick to guns, buddy. And now he's off, yeah. like kind of being Tony Stark in real life. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. All right. Doing stuff. That was our top ten of uh, MCU castings, and now we are jumping on to the next one, which is the top five MCU moments. Mm. Uh, and I, as I mentioned to you, I did yes. the list for this one. I did not do a list for this one. Um, so I'm going to be pulling these off the dome. And kind of going off of what you say, and uh... oh God, the pressure is on. All right, I've uh, also googled uh, MCU moments just to give myself some ideas. Oh my God, <laughs> uh, it, this one's easier for me. I'm not gonna lie, uh, doing this one because I just have just clear moments that I adore in the MCU so much. Uh, so going backwards again, uh, my number five is. And maybe a bit surprising one. I don't know. I don't care. I fucking love this scene. Is the Christmas scene where Hawkeye talks about Natasha in Hawkeye. I think that's fair. That's a very good choice. It's it's just such a beautiful scene, especially because for some reason, uh, people just don't like Hawkeye's character. I don't know why I always enjoyed his character. I like the character. Jeremy Renner, on the other hand, has got some problematic shit going on. <laughs> Look, I, I will say this, who doesn't? Yeah, but Jeremy Renner's level is a little bit higher than most people's. Google it. Um, yeah. I don't know the, the, the specifics off my head, that's why I'm mostly saying Google it, but I, I have read I've read stuff. He's not. You know? Mm, I am I am starting to get on, on the side where I would say that, you know, media and everyone will say shit and we really come to the point in uh this year and age that uh we're just cancelling everyone for things like i don't know like less what was it yesterday i read something that ben Barnes got cancelled for something yeah, i couldn't find what like um there's 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 internet there's the internet being the internet and then there's the legitimate things that have been uh, like reported on properly, um, and I again I can't like I said I can't remember the specifics of it, but I do I do remember reading like some stuff where it's a bit like, mm, mm. but I don't remember. So it, no, I don't really remember either. That's the thing. Like I don't even know what. But it's also like it's not it, that doesn't mean it's not, you know, um, yeah. it, it just means that we never looked into it properly. <laughs> yeah. 
and yeah oh well so anyway and again we do, again it's, it doesn't seem to there's no point in us trying to comment on something we, we don't have the information about because and that's yeah. the thing i hate the most people exactly. commenting on things we don't know anything about yeah <laughs> you don't know what's true what's not and you know oh well it's the hawkeye sin i i love that they showed the death to uh hawkeye that maybe wasn't even there before uh, that much like i think uh, they had the best uh friendship going on with natasha uh and him and uh you know i i wanted to see uh, how he feels because he was the one who was there in Endgame and had to watch her be- his best friend die um, instead of him. And uh, I I really liked that it it wasn't like a, a full out crying my eyes out moment for him, but it was like it's like ah oh, I've been touched here yeah. in the yeah. heart place. Yeah, and it's 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 just beautiful. It's just beautifully done. Uh, <laughs> on Jeremy Render's part and uh, just the whole scene all together is just very well put together. So that's my number five. That's a good one. I'm 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 looking at a long list of things here. Um and I just spotted one that actually I enjoyed quite a lot. Uh, okay. I shall mention it. Where is it gone? I've lost it. Where's it gone? Oh my god. <laughs> it disappeared from me. Oh um So I'm 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 again because because I didn't really and I said this to you before we started recording. There's so much of the MCU that exists in my head that I don't really have anything specific that like I did. I have not ranked moments in my brain. Right, that's just not a thing I've done. Um, and at this point, I don't really have the energy to so much <laughs> because of how much there is. Um. And it's, so it's like I like there are movies in in as a whole that I like, but like specific moments is a lot more difficult for me. And I find that in most things, mm-hmm. um, I don't tend to go for like, unless it, it did something really 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 specific, um, filmmaking wise. It's not a whole lot that kind of sticks in my brain as like, um, uh, in in that way in the way that you're talking about. But saying that, I'll say number five. First thing I thought of. Uh, one of those moments that I was quite obsessed with when it came out was the Natasha versus Loki scene in um, oh, in Avengers in the original Avengers movie. That whole <laughs> movie, that not oh, sorry, that whole scene. I was it, it like nowadays some of the language. I'm like okay, <laughs> mm-hmm. but that kind of like mental um, of yeah. the wills battle, yeah. very fun to watch. And yeah. it kind of showcased again the, of the sort of villain power, you know, of, of Tom mm. Wilson in Loki in that position, and and um, uh, I I was a very big fan of that back in the day. It's not the one I found, um, by the way, <laughs> but it was it is one that has stuck with me for many years, even if I haven't seen that movie in God, close to a decade or something at this point. I yeah. haven't seen it in a really long time. I still think about that scene. Um, yeah. It's uh, it was a good it was a good scene. Good yeah. the actors, good. <laughs> you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very good, very good choice. Yeah. I like that one. Yeah. I like that one. All right, number four. I have Thor, Groot, and Rocket arriving in Wakanda in Infinity War uh, through the Bifrost, uh, and uh, you know, seeing Stormbreaker for the first time in Thor's hand, and they just standing there like fucking cool dudes, and everyone is looking up at them like, oh my god, they are here. <laughs> And I, I will add a little bonus in there. It's, it's just uh, uh, you know the the union that we wanted. It's it's Rocket and and Bucky me thing. And uh, that's asking. a good one. That I was just thinking about that when as you were talking about. It, to be honest, yes, it's just yes. Thank you, Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I just saw a moment from Iron Man two. It's not what I'm talking. We're going to talk about. But it did remind me of a moment from the original Iron Man that I think I might okay. pick and put in here at number four. Okay. Um. Uh. The bit I'm trying to remember it is it Jeff Bridges who plays the bad guy in that movie? Yes. Yeah. Him breaking into Tony's house and using that like weird like sound device that paralyzes him. Do you remember okay. what, you know what I mean? That yes. bit. That 
has one of those, it, it, it's, it's a lot of tropes in there that I enjoy a lot. That I rewatched the Iron Man movies, like not recently, recently, but in recent enough memory that when that came out, I was like, oh fuck. Yeah, that's like, that's one of those, because it's one of those, I love a moment where we have our main character in like huge jeopardy. <laughs> Like, yeah, genuinely made like powerless in mm. I guess, um, and that and it, it's it's just again it's another one of those sort of like really really interesting tension scenes, um, where you got two people and and going up against each other and the one who is usually on top has been sort of rendered mute, <laughs> yeah, uh, in more ways than one, um. That yeah, that is actually legit one of the, one of those moments. Where I'm like, oh fuck! Like every time, it still kind of gets me. Um, I, I I have this thing, and I never really know how to explain it because I feel like I sound mad whenever I do. Um, where try me. I um, if there's a character that I really really like, or if I'm like that, I'm quite emotionally attached to. When they're in like peril or something like that, I get this like pain in my chest. Like, like it's like a sharp mm-hmm. pain that kind of goes yeah. through my chest. It's one of my favorite yeah. things. It doesn't make any sense, but it is one of my favorite it things. Does. It does. Like, <laughs> it, 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 because I tend to, it, I associate it with being very emotionally invested. Yeah. It's like, it is, it is a sharp sort of like, it's like, it's like it goes up through my nervous system. Um, and that's one of those things that gets that going. What, yeah. what, th- those moments are the ones where I'm like, oh, good. It's, <laughs> I'm, I'm in this. I'm in this. <laughs> I like that. I like. I I know what you mean exactly. It's so true. I I also have that. Uh, so good, so good. Uh, good choice. I like that choice. Uh, number three. It's Toby, Andrew, and Tom are all swinging together in No Way Home. It's just such a glorious scene. Yeah, I think that's it's fair. just you know it's all our Spider Mans that we got so far just getting together and finally realizing that they have to work together in order to, you know, be able to defeat these villains and 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 well, not really defeat, but help them and whatnot. And it's just it's just that moment as they jump off uh, the renewed <laughs> Captain America <laughs> Statue of Liberty <laughs> building and just start singing together. Beautiful. It's, I should point out that you're saying swinging, not singing, which I did think you said a couple of times, and I was like, I don't remember a karaoke scene. Oh, that would be so nice, though. <laughs> we, that would be so fun. nice, um, fun, uh, especially of... knowing that Andrew Garfield can sing. Oh very yeah, well. yes. Oh yeah. Um, actually, I'm gonna go off of that very specifically yes. and okay. say another moment from that movie that I do adore desperately, and it's it's when it's a bit before that when they're like, oh fuck, we're not doing this very well. And they have the kind of heart to heart moment with yeah. just the three of them, and it, it, it's 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 him turning to them both and going, "I love you guys," and they're like, "Thank you, thank anyway. you." But like, yeah. I think that is the kind of the epitome of, of them all getting to like properly interact together, and kind of yeah. tangentially, it's the moment bef- like a little bit before that when they're they're um, preparing. And you have that yeah. note between Andrew Garfield and 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 uh, Tobey Maguire when yeah. they're talking about the back problems and all that. It's it's just like <laughs> that. It, it's so much of just sort of like oh that's that's like home, <laughs> you know? Yeah, like, this it is, is. It's kind of everything. It's it's that kind of almost fan fictiony want that you want out of that. It's, yeah. it's like a, something from your childhood that yeah. comes back and actually manages to kind of fulfill that uh, child like glee. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, the the honorable mention here. Sorry, I will put this. No, here. please go. Uh, uh, the way. honorable mention here is Andrew catching Zendaya and heartbreaking, but oh. at the same time, yes, his fucking face. I know it's <laughs> so so good. So many uh, people got healed in that moment. Not just him. Me too. Me too. <laughs> me too. It was beautiful beautiful um all right number two the portal scene in endgame i just saw that come up on this list it's it's it's, it's specifically it's when caps as avengers assemble because i think okay yeah you know i'm gonna talk first (laughs) just the whole scene uh from the moment that sam says on your left in cap's ear and then the portals start opening and first we see 
the f- fantastic uh, Wakanda scene and Black Panther, uh, Shuri, and and everyone coming through, and then Sam flies in, and it's just the music. Uh, 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 as we get back, the people that we lost, it's just. You know what it is about that? It's a moment that's earned. It is, it's like it's so desperately earned. Because yeah. we, we the, you actually went to that incredibly dark moment in 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 Infinity War where we lost all of those people, and so mm. and we we waited until right at the end where we get that really genuinely heroic. And again, like I said, there are there are things to criticize about the MCU, and very very valid things to criticize about the MCU that we can continue to criticize about the MCU. But there is something so joyous. There, there was something so joyous about being in that cinema and watching all of mm. those portals open and everybody just flood out and and just it's like and you've got Cap holding Molnir, yeah. And it's like oh my god, it's really cool. <laughs> it's yeah, it's tears of joy, tears of joy at that moment. Like this is what we waited for, and and it's just beautiful. Beautifully done. It will never get old. I can watch that scene, I don't know, a thousand times and it will never get old. <laughs> so it's the portal scene. It's actually, game. it is like, specifically that bit that you're talking about is number one on this list. I okay. Should, I should, maybe I should point out, I'm, I am looking at a BuzzFeed list right now. Because <laughs> it was like 50 moments and I was like, that's a lot. I'll get, I'll get something out of this. Um, this was number two, right? We were at number two? Yeah, number two, yeah. I think this is a good one to put at number number two because I have I do have one for number one and it's almost like okay. the inverse of this. It's okay. Tony Stark telling everybody he's Iron Man at the end of Iron Man one. But that's your number one. That's my number two. That's your number two. That's my number two. Okay. Oh yeah. I mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come just, on. You know, just throwing out the number one rule of superheroes on the window and just being like, I'm I mean, Iron Man. It's, 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 it's that was also like it was a it was um. It, that that was a that was a Robert Downey Jr. thing where he was like, like yeah they they he he did that yeah and it changed the game like before the game had really even started yeah it's great and it's it is it's iconic it is iconic it's, icon- it's iconic iconic I don't really have I anything else to say on it because it's that that's fair it's iconic. you know that's a good point that's a good point it's just iconic okay here we are at number one and my number one is from. Can you guess him? Now, I honestly have no idea what you're going to go for here because there are co- there are a couple that come to mind, but I'm very focused on the one I'm going to say, so I can't think okay. of anything Okay, okay. So <laughs> we're, not, we're not playing a guessing game then. No, um, <laughs> please so, tell me. <laughs> it is from Captain America, the Winter Soldier. Is it the one in the elevator? No. Oh, okay. It's not. Is it? It's... Is it him seeing Bucky for the first time? No. Is it? <laughs> Hang on, I'm gonna get that. I'm get, I'm, and now we're doing the guessing thing. So now I'm okay. in the right place. Is okay. it the end of the movie when he does? I'm with you to the end of the line. Yes. Okay. I that was the again. You saw it, it's my third guess, but I got that. You you got there. You got, got there. I mean, yeah. No, that's fair. It's on my hand. Uh, arm. Sorry. <laughs> arm. Sorry. <laughs> Lily once again can't differentiate body parts. <laughs> <laughs> Fine, arm, okay. Uh, I'm with you till the end of the line. It's the you know Bucky beating the hell out of him, and and you know it's it's them finish me. It's you're my mission and whatnot, and I'm I'm crying. I'm already emotional, and Henry Jackson's beautiful music playing in the background, and it's just fucking piano, and it it takes the whole scene by storm, and it's so beautiful as uh, Cap is falling through. Uh, falling down uh, into the river and Bucky just looking after him and Sebastian Stan's fucking face is just full of recognition that 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 is his friend and just him pulling him out in the end on the shore and it's it's just such an iconic moment for me because as you all know I always love Bucky and Steve's friendship forever and that's why I'm fucking mad about the ending of Captain America how they choose to send him off. Um, yes, Bucky and Steve forever. Fucking legendary scene. It will never get old for me. Love it. This makes perfect sense for you. Um, I feel like this will make perfect sense for me. I yes. said that this one is the inverse of the one I just said before. 
Okay. Can you guess what it is? Uh, the uh, and I am Iron Man from Endgame. Yeah. 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 I mean, I feel like I don't really even need to talk about it properly, you know, because it's it, it it's it, you know. Mm. And I think I'm, I'm so glad that that was a thing that was in the reshoot part where they were like, "Oh, we need something else here," uh, yeah, because it wasn't ju- it wasn't enough for him to just do the snap. Because I he really fucking nailed that performance. <laughs> I mean, come on. And it is it's because it is it is such a heroic moment and it's so heartbreaking because you know he's not going to survive that. Yeah. But he just fucking saved everybody. Yeah. Dang. I, it's that's all I got. I just love him so I, much. Yeah, I agree. That's yeah. Well said. I think we said everything that needed to be said. Um, I do have. I I forgot to say that I have an honorable mention for the casting list. Oh. And uh, I already talked about it uh, on our episode on it. It's Christian Bale as Gore, the Gal oh, okay. He's my honorable mention. He deserves so much more. To be fair, still I'm I'm just, just still so oh, <laughs> salty. <laughs> <laughs> oh. he, he was fucking great. He was fucking great casting on that. So I'm very happy with that casting, and that's my honorable mention for the casting part. But yeah, that's it. That was us That's it. talking about MCU. It was our MCU talk. We still haven't ranked the MCU movies. <laughs> no. And I don't think I ever will. <laughs> I won't fair. lie to you. There's too many of them. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're getting to that point. Uh, Damon Lindelof said something very interesting recently. Okay. Where he, he, he basically, he, he, they made it, you know, the press is like, uh, they, made, they made it out like he like slammed the MCU. And he was like, no, I just think there should be less movies a year so you can make the ones that do come out more special. And I entirely agree with him. <laughs> Yeah, that's not just, a bad point. I feel like slowing down the production of things coming out to like hmm. two two movies and like two series a year. Let's put it that way. I think, yeah, and I that and that's me being generous. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, like I don't think you need any more than that. But the fact it's the fact that we're getting like, hey, it's five series and four movies, and it's like Jesus Christ, I just calm down. <laughs> I'm getting fatigued. <laughs> I don't want to get fatigued. This is nice. And you but okay. it's like at the same time, you know what the other great thing about if they they pull back more room for other cinema. You know? Cuz they they do dominate and in a way they, that's like Yeah. You know, we need other things. Like that we you don't get there there's a great clip of Matt Damon talking about um uh how streaming has kind of killed the ability to make interesting movies uh, on on uh, Hot Ones uh, that mm, came out mm. that he did recently, and it's a really really good. It's a good point, and I agree with it entirely. I just I I am somebody who really wants my cake and eat it too because it's like there's a lot of things I love about the MCU. It's fun, mm. and you get kids; they get to be able to see these amazing things and, and feel you know that yeah. sense of like joy and and. Yeah. and like you know that feeling you get when you come out of the cinema and you kind of feel like you should have superpowers because you've just been watching people with superpowers for the past two hours, you know. Mm. Um, that I think is there's I that's one of the things I cherish most about being able to watch movies in child my childhood and going to the cinema and all that sort of stuff. At the same time, we don't have space for movies like the ones that you got in the kind of indie scene at the end of the early nineties, where they could just kind of do things and like just mm. make kind of. Like stories, you you Forrest Gumps and 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 Good Will Hunting and 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 those kinds of films, you know. Um, yeah. They just there's no space for them anymore. So hey Marvel, because <laughs> you're obviously gonna listen to me. Why don't you just cut back on production a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> Katie said it. I said it. Just like just a bit. Just just cut back, so that you can generate like and the hype seems to be a big thing for you people. Generate more hype. On the things that are going to come out, but then you also leave space for other stuff and people with more like original, interesting, experimental ideas. Mm. I have a very indie cinema is very close to my heart. It's been discussed before. I'm very. I'm going to stop now. I've said my piece. <laughs> fair. That's a fair deal, you know. I I like that. I like that. Fair. I love the MCU. You know that. Uh, but I do agree. 
I don't, I don't mind this many things coming out at all. Like, you know, my MCU loving heart is very happy uh, with it. It's and I'm, just, it's, I'm, it's, it's, it's too much, I think. It is getting a bit too much, but uh, no, I'm not honest. I just love it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I, I really am like, uh, you know, I love TV shows. I love movies and, and I am trying to watch as many things as, as humanly possible uh, but uh, what I uh, like what I uh, what I think is happening to me is that I just love the whole idea behind it so much that I just don't mind it you know like I actually looking forward to I understand I, I just the, the, um, it's the it's the saturation issue you know that the, I, I think that it, it sits with anything and it comes very 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 specifically from an annoyance at the fact that disney's basically eaten the entire movie industry they've they've eaten yeah. up all of the the exile ex, 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 the external <laughs> can't think of the talking word. today ex, is ex, so ex, good ex, exhilar, exhilar, <laughs> exhilary, the auxiliary sort of film studios i just couldn't figure yeah. out how to pronounce it i could see the word That's in my fair. head i was like ex, 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 auxiliary yeah film studios like like when they bought fox and then did the whole thing of just like people like these massive companies just merging together to make these in monopolies it doesn't do anything it all it does is it flatten out the market i'm just gonna get into like a full-on anti-capitalist round if i keep going um you can read about this sort of stuff on your own it's, yeah it's bad and disney shouldn't own the entire film industry i said what i said you said what you said. I will say this before we close this episode. Uh, Erica sent me, uh, Erica, who was here when oh, we yes. talked about Multiverse of Madness, um, sent me a very interesting article, and I just love the idea behind it. Uh, it's basically, uh, there has been a lot of fourth wall breaking uh, in recent MCU shows, movies, and whatnot. And now, especially with She-Hulk, uh, she is talking to us, yes. us, uh, there are two te- theories. I love the second one even more. The first one is that she's talking to the Watcher, who we got introduced in What If, uh, and is assumably coming back in What If season two. Uh, the second theory, and that's my favorite one, and I want this to be true so badly, is that she is, and everyone who broke the fourth wall is talking to Deadpool. <laughs> Oh, yeah, and I'm cool. like, oh my god, yes. Because as you may all know, I think Katie, you are aware of this as well. Deadpool is the only one who's aware that he uh, he is a comic book character. Yeah, that makes sense. And he knows that you know he's in a film, he's in whatever. So there, there's a whole lot of discussion around this sort of trend of like undercutting genuinely emotional moments in movies by kind of being a bit sort of like wing wing nudge nudge. We know we're a film, um, because it. it I don't mind it in some places. I think it has its place. It is becoming a thing that is like almost like, okay, but I do want you to be earnest, you know? It's like, do you don't need to undercut the drama of the moment that you're making by being like, we know that it's dramatic here, so we're going to make a little joke out of it. It's like, no, you don't need to do that. Just let it be. Just let it be. You know? What are you referring to? Because generally, I I'm talking about generally in film. I think the MCU is a kind of a primary example of the kind of it's that Joss Whedon esque dialogue that's kind of like a little bit self. Oh, I don't know why I went a bit Cockney then. <laughs> a little bit self aware. <laughs> Where it's a bit. Do you not know what I'm referring to? It's no. that sort of like <laughs> sense of it. It's it's. It's Oscar Isaac as as Poe being like, oh, uh, somehow Palpatine returned, and uh, oh, they fly now. That kind of like sardonic. We know this is stupid, but we're gonna put it in the film anyway. Kind of attitude. But I'm not talking about this though. What? No, but I'm I'm going. It's it's I'm going off of it in a related sense. I'm not saying that that's specifically what you're talking about. I'm saying that there is a, it it's related to that kind of self aware dialogue. Is it though? It's because a that's, bit. I'm talking about the you're liter talking, of fourth wall you're baking. Talking about like... Specifically, I'm talking about that, but in the sort of meta text sense. 
So it's it's related, but it's not the same thing. I'm not saying that those things are bad. I'm just going off of what you're saying and, and taking it kind of step to the left and go, but this is also a thing that's happening and I'm not sure how I feel about that. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, those are weird, but this fourth rule making is just but yeah, it, it, it's when it's when it's in very, very intentional, that kind of like literal I mean and, and She Hulk has like precedence for it because it's it's a comics thing. Just like Deadpool is the same way, you know. Yeah. Um but there's it's it's related to the way that the MCU writes a lot of their dialogue in, in recent times where there is a sense of sort of like well, not just the MCU. Most the like, Disney properties, like Star Wars, is it kind of it has a little bit of that, it, um, in the things I mentioned, but also Rise of Skywalker, which is shit in a lot of ways. So let's just put that out there. It doesn't matter. It, 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 that's a whole other discussion to have. Um, I it was is. just, I it was it was a related thought. That's there you go. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. That was us. Awesome. <laughs> 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 my neurodivergence just spilled out of me then it's like hey i heard what you're saying but i'm gonna talk about something completely different i was so confused i was like the fuck how did this it's like, look it makes sense to me okay <laughs> that all that matters <laughs> uh but anyway this was us uh talking about mcu stuff it was a good one we have fun hmm. and then we will fun. well right. we're not gonna fun. see good you choice, Lily. Thank you, thank you. I tried, I tried. I didn't know what to talk about, so I figured no, it this was good is chat. the one. We kind of did this a little bit last minute because uh, again, we're busy, um... <laughs> busy people, busy people. I'm going busy on people. holiday again. It's a little holiday. Okay, yeah, that's you know that's fair. Um, so yeah, camping. it's good. It's good fun. Uh, we were back in <laughs> we two weeks' time because I've gone out of focus. Yes, you did. Uh, we'll see you in two weeks times and really <laughs> you did really uh, don't forget to subscribe yes don't forget to like us and share and maybe you talk. can look, look here's the thing I check comments quite regularly because I like hearing what you guys have to say I'm so out of focus um, <laughs> please leave a comment because I like reading yeah. them and I do reply to stuff I, I don't reply on the account if you buy on, if there's a reply from the account it's, it's definitely Lily if it's from hey. me it's from me. Yeah. Which makes sense. Um, it does. Yeah. So, you yeah. know, please comment. I like having discussions about these things. But also, yeah. I don't guarantee that I will reply. <laughs> Maybe she will. But I she will, will read it. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Uh, be good. And, uh, <laughs> be, be good, children. <laughs> be good, children. Uh, we love you all. Goodbye. Goodbye. In case anyone is wondering, I'm still thinking about dreams. Goodbye. <laughs> Thank you.